In this video, we'll be trying to solve this particular question on the series and parallel connection of resistors. All right. Now let's look at this question here. The question here says, consider the following circuit, complete the table. Okay, so you're given this circuit here by the left hand side. You ask to complete this table. All right, so how do we solve this? Your first task would be from this given circuit here, would have to find the equivalent or total resistance and to do that first of all we have r1 and r2 as you can see here now with this would have to find the equivalent of r1 and r2 these two here would have to find their equivalent and to do that we can see that r1 and r2 these two here are connected in series all right if you want to understand the concept of series and parallel connection of resistors we've already treated that in our previous class I will leave a link in the video description, all right? So check the description. You see a link to the class on series and the parallel connection of resistors. Now back to this, R1 and R2 are connected in series. So let's take their equivalent, all right? So, so I, would say, I would say R1 and R2 are connected in series so what would be the equivalent the equivalent of r1 and r2 would be r1 2 all right r1 2 simply means the equivalent of resistor 1 that's r1 and resistors 2 that's r2 and we also remember that from our previous class when resistors are connected in series to get the equivalent we'll simply take the sum of the individual resistors so r1 to becomes r1 plus r2 all right let's impute value this is equal to the value of r1 as you can see is 150 ohm and r2 is 220 ohm so i'm having 150 plus 220 all in ohms all right let's get this done now, if you connect this, this gives you 370. I'm having this as 370 in ohm. All right. So if I combine R1 and R2, the value is 370 in ohm. Now, with this, what we now have would now look like this. So basically, what we have now is this. You have resistor this way. Coming down here. Uh, let me see this again. Okay. That's a 12 volts. This, now you have... This one here coming down here to this point then this stops here goes this way then comes this way here um, this just simply take this off take this off all right they will now have something of this nature all right so with this now here you have your 12 volts all right that's your potential difference of voltage you have r3 as 470 so i'll just come here do this and then do this do this then do this do this and then do this all right so this is r3 whose value is 470 ohm so i have this that's value of r3 then rec record that we've just resolved r1 and r2 these two here when we resolve it, we we'll have one value, which is the value of R12. So R12 will now be here. All right? R12 would now be here. All right. So I'll now have R12, which is a combination of R1 and R2. All right? And we got the value here as, look at this here, 370 ohms. So it becomes 370 ohm. All right? So your first tax is to combine R1 and R2, which we've done here. Now, at this point, we now have to combine the value of R1, 2 to the value of R3. The question will now be, what we have here, is it a series connection or a parallel connection? And how do we find that? Now, we said for series is end to end. If I look at this, the end of this particular resistor, which is this part here, let me just highlight this, this particular part here, which is the end, this particular part here, is connected to this other end here, this one here, look at this particular part there, with a particular straight line, which runs from here, goes this way here, 
and then comes to this way here without any interruption. So hence, we can say it is a series connection. So we'll come here and say also, also, R12 and R3 are in series. What does that mean? It means that they are equivalent, which in this case becomes R total or R equivalent or R total, whichever way. So I'll call this R total or let me just call this RT, right? Which is RT, it's equal to. Now observe that I did not call this R123, right? What I did for R1 and R2, I had R12 as the equivalent. Now when I did 123, I did not write R123, no. Instead, I wrote ROT or R total, or in some cases, R equivalent. Why is it so? Well, the answer is simple because if I resolve this one here and this one, observe that I do not have any other resistor in the circuit. So, this is my last resolution. By the time you finish your last resolution, it becomes an ROT or R equivalent. For the first one, the reason why we use R12 was because if I resolve R1 and R2, I am still left with R3, a particular resistor which I have to resolve. So at that point, you don't use ROT, okay? So you only use ROT or R equivalent when you're dealing with the very last resolution. That's the concept there, all right? All right, let's proceed to this. I'll just take this off and let's proceed. Again, since they are in series, I'll simply add up their value. So ROT becomes R12 plus R3. And that's equal to R12's value is 370. That becomes 370 plus R3's value is um, 470. That becomes 470. All right, let's, of course, all in, both in ohms. So I'm having 370 plus 470. And that's about 840, so 840 ohm. So that's the total. So R total is 840 ohm. So I'll come back to my table here. R total is about 840 in ohm, right? All right, so the first task is done. Now, when it comes to filling current, here's what to note, please. Note this. Note this. For resistors, note this, for resistors in series, the same current, the same current flows through them. So this is something to note, okay? Very important concept. For resistors in series, the same current flows through them. Also, for resistors in parallel, the same potential difference or voltage flows through them. But we're not dealing with parallel now, all right? So when they are in parallel, the same potential difference flows through them. But in series, the same current flows through them, all right? Now, if you observe this, these three values were actually in series. So instead of doing R1 plus R2, and now doing R3 later, I could still just do R1 plus R2 plus R3, and I will still have the same answer. That would be 150 plus 220 plus 470, and that will give you the same 840. So what does it mean here? It means these three resistors are in series. So when they are in series, what happens? They share the same current. So the same current flows through R1, R2, and R3. So what is that current value? How do we get it? Well, it's simple. Now, what we'll do is simple. From this particular diagram here, this one here, would we'll form a new diagram, which would look like this. Now, here's what we know. The new diagram would look like this. Here's what we know. We know that we had a um, voltage, right? We had a voltage, um, 12 volts here. And then here, we have this, and this. Okay, then we have this. Let's say the both meet here. That's the total resistance they meet here. Right. Okay. This. Then this. All right. So this is my 12 volts. 
and this is the value of rt r total rt as equal to 840 ohm so i have this all right so how do we get the current what do we do we we'll use ohm's law all right let's use ohm's law now record that ohm's law mathematically we can get ohm's law by saying that v is equal to i times r okay the r we're using here is now rt so you can say v is equal to i times rt this is ohm's law the value of v is 12 it's equal to the current is what we are looking for times r total that's 840 so how do we get i we get i by dividing both sides so i'll divide this and also divide this by 840 so divide this by 840 divide this by 840 this cancels this let's get i from here from here we can have that i is equal to 12 over 840 that's about 0 0.014 right 14 that's the value approximately and don't forget that current is in amperes so the value is 0 0.014 amperes so i have this all right, so coming back to this, and we said the same current flows through this. So automatically, this becomes 0 0.014. The same current flows through this, 0 0.014. Same current flows through this, 0 0.014. Same current flows through this, 0 0.014. So I have this. Right, so with this, I've filled up the current. The idea here is that for resistors in series, the same current flows through them. And I'm done with this. Now, my final tax now will now be to get the word there, voltage, right? This voltage value for each of them. That's my final tax. All right, so let's get the voltage value for each of them. Again, to get the voltage for each of these here, we'll still use the concepts that... Um, all right, so to get the voltage again, recall that from Ohm's law that V is equal to i times r we use this to get the voltage for each of these so for the first one here for r1 we have that v1 which is the v here so v1 is equal to i well if you say i or i1 is the same thing because the current is constant is the same so let's say i r1 instead and that's equal to i is 0 0.014 0 0.014 into r R1 is this one here, the resistance for 1. So this is the um, column for 1. So if you say R1 becomes resistance for R1, whose value is 150, becomes this into 150. All right, so I'll get my calculator. I'll punch 0 0.014 times 150, and that gives you about 2.1 volts. So the answer there is 2.1. I'm having this as... 2.1 that's the value let's take the next one there v2 for v2 it becomes i into r2 and that becomes i what's the value of i um it's a constant 0 0.014 0 0.014 into r2 so just go to row 2 that's this one here for r2 the value of the resistance here is 220 so that's into 220 this into 220 and if I do that I'm having 0 0.014 times 220 that's 3.08 all right I have this as 3.08 volts uh, we could choose to convert to one decimal place that becomes 3.1 volts so that works there so this becomes 3.1 approximately let's get for R3 or for, for V3, yeah? that's the voltage of R3, that's I R3, and that's equal to I 0 0.014 into R3. R3 is the resistance for R, for R3 here, right? That's 470, so you can see here. So this into 470, and that's equal to, so this into 470, what do we have there? That's literally 6.3, 6 um, That's 6.58 approximately gives you 6, all right? 6.6 .6 volts. 
if I do this here, I'm having 6.6 .6 volts, so I would come here and put this as 6.6 .6 approximately in volts. So this becomes the answer to this. Alright, so with this, we are done with the voltage row, we are done with the current row, we are done with the resistance row. The last thing there is the power row, alright? So let's label the power row. Let's label this um, A. Let's label this B. Let's label this C. Let's label this D. So I would solve for A. You would solve for B, C, and D. Then you leave your answer in the comment section, and I will tell you if you're correct or not. All right. All right. Let's get let's get for power. For power, what do we know? For power, we know that P is equal to what there I V. All right. That's a formula for power. Again, we discussed this in our previous class. I'll leave a link in video description. For power, P is equal to I V. Or you could still use I squared R, whichever one you have the same answer. All right. How is it I squared R? Well, we just said that V is I R. So if I put V as I R here, I'll be having, if I put V as I R here, I'll be having something that looks like I into V. V itself is I R. And that gives you I times I is I squared times R. So that's how we got the answer. But anyways, let's get P1. So P1 will be equal to I, I, of course, I is constant, into V1, and that's equal to I 0 0.014 into V1. Let's get the value of V1. V1 is simply the voltage, um, the voltage for R1. So if I look at the R1 column, that's this, all right, the voltage value there is 2.1, as you can see. So V1 is 2.1. So I would come here, this into V1 is 2.1. Let's get this value. What's the answer here? This is equal to, I'm having 0 0.014 times 2.1. And that gives you about 0. Point, that gives you about 0 0.029, approximately 29. Power is measured in what? Electrical power is in what? So 0 0.029 watts, all right? That means the A here is 0 0.029. So I'm having this as 0 0.029. That's the value, all right? All right, so with this now, I'll leave you to the other tax there. Your tax now is to find the value of B, find the value of C, and then find the value of D. Leave it in the comment section and I will tell you if you're correct, okay? So just write B equal to this what, C equal to this what, D equal to this what. Leave it in the comment section and I will tell you if you are correct, all right? All right, guys. So as usual, all right, guys. So don't forget that you can check out my available courses on my website. Simply visit www.jonahimano.com forward slash courses or you can look at the available books at www.jonahimano.com journalimmanuel.com forward slash books, all right? Do well to register an account to the website and then proceed to get any of the available courses or books. You can also join my channel membership to get access to exclusive classes for just channel members, all right? I'll leave a link to my website as well as to join my channel membership in the video description. Also, I'll leave a link to a WhatsApp channel, all right? So join and then you get updates on our WhatsApp channel, all right? All right, guys, don't forget to like this video. If you enjoyed the video, if you learned something, do well to hit the like button, leave a comment. For your comment, I gave you a task. Get the value of B, C, and D. Leave it in the comment section, and I will tell you if you're correct, all right? Next up, do not forget to subscribe. If it's your first time here or you're yet to subscribe, please do well to hit the subscribe button and select all, right? Hit the bell icon, select all, so that you get notified whenever we upload new content. Then finally, share this video to your friends so that they can also learn, all right? Share to your friends on your, de on your department WhatsApp group so that they can also learn, all right? Many thanks and see you in our next class.